I'm running a Sprint Epic 4G going from the Eclair to uh, Froyo, then routing it, and then patching the wireless tether, and uh, I was lucky enough to get uh, my GPS up and running. I'm going to walk you through this process. You can find uh, my notes. I'm going to post them at uh, XDA Developers, um, Android Forums, and Android Central. I'd like to thank all those guys for their contributions. Uh, basically, I'm just using their work. I'm condensing it and trying to make an easy tutorial for someone to follow. Uh, thanks a lot to all the developers out there, and please go and use their forums and uh, buy their products and make donations to help them out and keep them doing this great stuff. Okay, let's get going here. Uh, first step, you have to excuse, I'm already running Froyo on there. I'm still going to try to walk through the process as best I can. Uh, first step is to get the computer to recognize the telephone. That seems to be the ongoing problem for most people. I was lucky enough not to run into too many issues once I found uh, good uh, drivers. Okay, uh, basically you're going to go uh, follow the links that I'm going to include in the show notes. I'll try to zoom in here so you can see them. Uh, but basically you're going to go into the, uh, in this case the XDA forum. Ignore the uh, root at the beginning. We're going to use that a little later. In my case, I'm using Windows XP 32, 32-bit. 32 you need to determine uh, what version you're running on Windows. Uh, in my case, it's Vista. Uh, right here's my link that I used. There's yours. Uh, you have to do further research if you're using Mac or Linux. Linux ran into more problems than anybody, I think. There just wasn't anything in development for them. Um, if you're using XP, I heard that most people made it through. Windows 7 64-bit ran into some issues. Uh, people were having different trouble. Uh, one of the primary problems was not connecting the USB to the proper USB port. When you connect your phone, it needs to be on the motherboard based USB, which is typically on a desktop on the back. It depends on the motherboard though. Some motherboards don't need that, but uh, that was an ongoing problem. Um, you're going to go ahead and click, in my case, on the 32-bit drivers. It'll bring up the download. Uh, make sure it's the Samsung drivers. I don't need it, so I'm going to save everything to the desktop to make it easy to find. After you're done, you can go ahead and uh, click it, install the drivers, let it do its thing. Um, you're going to need to set up your phone for that as well. Uh, go ahead with your telephone, the top drop down menu. Again, excuse the little differences in appearance because I'm using Froyo. Get USB connected. Uh, this screen will be very different on Eclair, but you're going to go ahead and it'll have a drop down menu that say mount. Um, you're going to go ahead and mount your um, phone. It'll do its thing. Um, and then you'll have a pop up on your screen. You'll hit open. And basically that allows you to see your SD card. It uses it as a drive under my computer. If your drivers were installed successfully, you'll see this. If they weren't, well, then you need to go back and work on it, do some more reading. Uh, follow my notes, go to the forums, um, you'll see uh, the process I went through in more detail. Uh, we're going to go ahead and ignore this for the time being. Okay, the next step after you uh, get your phone running Oh, excuse me, I forgot to mention, uh, this will be a stock telephone I'm working from uh, at that point. Uh, it's just right out of the store, brand new, nothing special. Uh, make sure you don't have any other ROMs or other rooted stuff going on. Uh, you can do this with a root, uh, but again, it'd be easiest to, to make sure it works correctly if you uh, remove the root and go back to your stock. Okay, we're going to go ahead and download the software for Froyo. Um, it's a .tar file, and to load that .tar file, you're going to need a program called Odin, O-D-I-N. Um, the easiest way to do it is to follow the links I provided, uh, which come, in this case, from XDA Forums. Um, you'll go ahead and go to XDA Forums. You're going to need a very specific um, piece from Odin, or excuse me, a uh, program of Odin, uh, because if you use the other ones, it won't have the same options, and you won't be able to follow these instructions. Click on the instruction link, 
it'll bring up a page. Uh, I already have it loaded, so we'll skip that and go to this page. Uh, the first portion is a different set of instructions that we're not following. Scroll past those instructions, go to the alternate instructions. I found this to work best on my phone. Other people have successfully used the other version, the update.zip, but we're not going to go into that. We're going to do this version. Uh, you will download the .tar file, save it again to your desktop as easiest, or a file that your folder you're used to using. Download Odin. Uh, the .tar file is going to link you uh, to this setup here. Some of these are really slow. They try to make you members. Uh, Mega Upload is the easiest. That's the one I use the most uh, for this. Uh, excuse me, it closes that window. Okay, and then you can go ahead and after you get that downloaded, which takes a minute, click on Odin. Uh, it'll bring it up. Go ahead and hit OK and save it. It'll bring it to your desktop as well. Okay, you're going to need to come down to the phone. If you excuse me doing this one-handed. I'm going to turn off my USB storage. You're going to go into a little special process with the telephone here. Uh, you need to power down the telephone. Again, my screen looks a little different than yours due to the fact that it is uh, running for you. Wait till the phone is turned all the way off, which means these lower lights at the bottom here go out. Uh, once the lower lights are off all the way, can open it. It takes a second for it to power all the way down. Okay, phone is off. This is going to be a little tricky, but basically I'm going to have to hold down the uh, one, hold down the number one, compress it. On the back side is the power button. While holding one, hold the power button down. Okay. That puts you in download mode. It'll look different on your phone uh, because this is the Froyo version of it. Okay, you can go ahead and uh, plug the phone in. Again, one-handed. Bear with me here. Okay, got the phone plugged in. In download mode. My Odin file, dead center on the desktop here for convenience. Double click on it. Again, you need the exact version of Odin. Uh, in my case, it extracts it automatically there. And then you'll double click on Odin. It, it asks you to extract all or run. Select run. Select run again. There's the program. Now, because the phone is plugged in, you'll see right here in yellow. Because it's yellow, that means it recognized the telephone. It needs to have a comm listed there. Uh, it doesn't matter what the number is. It was four a minute ago when I was working on this. Now it's COM5. Uh, just ignore that. It's not relevant. Um, but basically you want to make sure it recognizes the phone. Now you're going to come down here. I saved the uh, .tar file, which essentially is Froyo, to the desktop. You'll need to select PDA. You'll need to scroll down to your file and click on it. Moving it into here. Okay. I'll say added. Then up here, you'll click start. I'm not going to because I already did that. It'll run through a whole bunch of processes in this window, which is essentially adding Froyo to your telephone. Okay, I'm going to close this out since I'm already done with all this. And disconnect this. Just bear with me one second here while I catch things up.